You're gonna say welcome to the YouTube channel? <laughs> it's your channel. Oh, I'm so nervous now. Today, we're gonna do a Q&A with my boyfriend. Who? We're also gonna eat food Can and Q&A &A my I think Joy here. I forgot to say this in the video, but I got these questions from you guys from Instagram that you guys submitted. I wanted to say thank you for sending them questions. I thought nobody was gonna send me questions, and I had to get my friend to like pretend to send me questions, which would have been really embarrassing. Thank you for sending your questions. Okay, let's go back to the video. Also, I'm recovering from being sick, so I sound a little sick. Okay, first question. How did we meet? We met on Hinge. At the end of December of 2020. Yeah. Met on Hinge. The boys were taking a trip in Vancouver. Then I was swiping, you know, some casual oh on God. Hinge. And then I swiped on her. She had this like one picture. She was trying to go for Q, but then she was oh. also trying to go for like sexy baddie, right? So then I hit her the not sure if you're cute or sexy. Wait, no, 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 that's kind of cringe. I wouldn't say that. Oh, I said, I don't know what's better, the cute photo or the sexy photo. I basically got no reply for like a day or two. It wasn't that I was ignoring you, I just wasn't on the app. So we were supposed to hang out. This is like when COVID was really bad. And then he told me like the day before, like, oh, I went to a restaurant where there was a COVID exposure. Obviously, I can't hang out with him. But then the day before he left, so I couldn't hang out so with him. So in it. Vancouver, there's this ski snowboard site called Cypress. I've never gone snowboarding, so I don't know why I decided to go, but my friends dragged me and then I'm like, oh, by the way, I'm going to Cyprus. And he's like, oh shit, I'm going to Cyprus too. But I didn't think I was going to run into him. I went at two and then he went later in the evening. I don't know when he was going. But when you're going skiing, you're like covered up. I never met him, so I wouldn't even know who he was anyway. Then somehow we were just in the cafeteria at like the right time. And then he came up and said hi to me and it was very awkward. I did come up and say hi to him. Felt one of those like grade eight like, crush moments. And I was like, <laughs> up since then, we've only been talking through like text message. So I go up to her and then I was like, oh, hey, enjoy, right? And she's like, yeah, um, uh, do, do, do you want to feel how wet my sweater is? Nice, W Riz, W Riz. Oh, that was really Riz move, yo. <laughs> made me touch her right off the bat. No, you didn't touch me. I made you feel the. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just don't want to stand there in silence. Like, what if I just like, hey, and yeah. then it's just like quiet. I feel like I had to say something. No, I think that the more you try to say, the more awkward it becomes. Okay, so what? I should have just stood no, there. No, but and you definitely, like... you definitely saved it with a physical <laughs> touch. You know what you it's said like... that was cringe after. Oh, by the way, when I was seeing this picture, someone came and said hi to No, me. I didn't say that. Yeah, you did. Yeah. I will post the That's receipt. That's like a weird flex. And then you're like, oh, later when trying to get this Uber, someone drove past us. Oh my god, I was like... so cringe. I would never do that. What is your age difference? Four years. 28 and she's 24. Do we live together? Yeah, we live together. We just moved into this house. All of the couples live together. Do you guys ever get sick of each other? If so, how do you cope? No, not really. I think we're pretty compatible in that term. Like, we give each other space. We do our own thing. Like for example, if you're gonna hang out with um, Fanny Grace, you do a girl's thing. Well, we're both pretty independent, so that's a positive thing. So I don't get sick of you. I think it is important to have time apart. Cause like, if you ever feel anything that comes up in the relationship, it's really hard to gloss over it if you're always together. But I feel like sometimes, even if you just go to Markham for a weekend and I stay downtown, it allows me to just spray and then just process things on my own, which I need. Maybe some people don't need that, but I personally need that. And I need to be alone to do that. That's good. I think we have a very good balance. Mm -hmm. How was our first date? So we had what a, was our first date well, though? First date when I came down to Vancouver. I visited her in Vancouver on January 1st, 2021. Okay. That was the first time we met in person. We, our first date we ran in Stanley Park and then we went to grab food. It was surprisingly very like chill. Not awkward at all because we technically talked a lot before we went on a date. We were like FaceTiming every night. Yeah. So it felt pretty like natural. You consider that the first date though? Yeah, this is the first date. I don't think I consider that the first oh. date because before he came to Vancouver, he kept telling me like, Oh, by the way, my boy has a really good deal. It's so cheap. I was under the impression that he was coming to Vancouver to hang out with his friends. Which I was. Yeah, I you did not hang out with them. You hung out with them because I couldn't hang out with you. No. Wait, I didn't tell my side of what I the first I thought the first date was um, when we went to Stanley Park at night. I feel like was that was the first first date. Yeah, I kissed her by the way. <laughs> who asked who up first? I asked her to be my girlfriend. <clears throat> yeah, I wasn't gonna ask you. We but took so I did, long. I did. I did. We met in December and he asked me out in May. May. I didn't make sure, okay? You have to go through very rigorous scouting reports, assess all candidates, and then kind of narrow down the tryouts until the last round. Mm. And then congratulations, you made the last round. <laughs> 
Did you meet each other's parents yet? Yeah. So obviously you guys know that he met my parents. She's met my parents more times than I've met hers just because Oh my god, him. what is this? Who Toronto? eats it like this? Yeah. I see your parents pretty often. Yeah. Someone asked me, did your mom say anything about you moving to Toronto? No, because I was already living in Toronto before I met him. I went to U of T, so I was already living here from undergrad. And when I met him, I was doing my last year, so I had to go back anyways. I go back all the time, so it's, it's not really that bad. What are our love languages? Your love language, top two, is probably physical touch and words of affirmation. What? Yeah. Oh, ass and services. Physical touch and words of affirmation. <laughs> I, don't, no. I, don't know, I don't know which one is first, but it's one of those. No, I would say quality time is up there. Oh, shit. No, I think uh, no, no, no. Your <clears throat> quality time and then your physical touch, uh, access services. I think mine are. Is this any any specific order? Mm, you you order rank. I feel like we're pretty similar. Maybe physical touch is not up there. It's sure. definitely not quality touch. I'm kidding. No, 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 yeah. Wait, what is yours? Mm -hmm. I think mine is um, acts of services, quality time, and physical touch. Okay, so the same. When did you guys know you were right for each other? Mm, when did I know we were right for each other? That's a very hard question. Like For me, it was more so like, when did I know that I can commit to a long-term relationship? I, I think you're always figuring out if they're the right person. Like, it's an evolving process. I knew that you were somebody that I wanted to date. I think about like two or three months after talking. Three months after talking, I was trying to prove the fact that you weren't somebody that I wanted to date. So I constantly try to like look at flaws or like, hey, you know, make sure that. And then after that, I, I didn't really find any huge, big red flags. I was like, you know what? It's, it's pretty worthwhile to give it a shot. Thank Cheers you. to that. <laughs> ah! I think I'm someone who just excessively worries. So I'm always just worrying about all the wrong things. And I realized that one thing that I feel when I'm around you, it sounds so corny. I just always think if everything in my life were to go wrong, if I have you in my life, it'll be okay. Like somehow I'll be able to feel I will make it through no matter how bad I get. So. Hey, I'm kidding. Okay. Next. Who said I love you first? No, she coerced me. No, no I didn't. Me. Yeah, what she did is like no, one day, no, no, one no. day, wait, no, 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 no. <laughs> let me tell the story. Okay, so one time she came over, she left, and then she texted me. She was no. like, oh, she's like, oh. Um, as I was about to leave, I was going to say love you because that's what I do with all my friends and stuff. And I was like, okay, and like, why are you telling me this? And then I knew that she was trying to coerce me into saying I love you. But, but, but I waited until the moment which I felt that I loved her. And then I said it. That, I don't toss that word around lately. I don't okay, toss that I, word around no, lately. No, no, no. I think a lot of girls just do this with their friends and then they end up going like, yeah, I love you. I did not say that and tell him that because I was thinking in my mind like, oh, I wanted to say I love you because at that moment, I don't even think I knew it was just something that it's like those intrusive thoughts that you have and I just yeah. wanted to like overshare you and know? I said I love you to her no a couple no, months no, 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 after being coerced and being primed psychologically no. into saying that that is not what happened when you said I love you <laughs> Do you remember what happened? Yeah. I remember it was this one night, I think it was in June. Do you remember when it No, happened? I remember because no, we're it was, in bed, right? I had some of my friends over and we had like a little like get together. And then I remember it was because you were being very weird that night. You kept saying very weird things. Like I remember we were in the washroom getting ready for bed and I was standing there and then you just looked at me and you're like, I really like you and I'm like, okay. <laughs> and then later in bed we're sleeping and we're like Carly, we're getting ready to sleep and he's like, you know what? You make me nervous. <laughs> what did I when did I say these things? Are you sure I wasn't drunk? <laughs> I think you were a little sure tipsy. You're like, you make me kind of nervous because I love you. You're just making some crazy accusations. I don't think it went down that way. Your worst fight. Or do we ever fight that made us want to break up? Um, the worst fight we've had was one in New York. I fought one oh. in New York. That was pretty bad. I don't want to overshare it though. Maybe, maybe like... Maybe we make another video about our fights. You make it sound like we have all these crazy No, fights. we don't, we don't, we don't. The reason that the New York one felt very resonating with you. Mm -hmm. She has some very deep, intimate details. Mm, yeah. Have any of your past relationships affected each other? Um, no, I don't think so. That's more of a question for you than for me. I think it would have made a bigger difference if I was like a loyal fan. I don't think I could date you because then I just feel really weird. It would rob you of the opportunity to tell me mm -hmm. things because I already kind of know. But it's not that you would know from your perspective. I know mm. from the perspective of the video. How do you feel about Mike having such a public relationship with his ex? Or I think the interest internet and people that watch you make it more of a deal mm -hmm. than you would because if the internet and like people that watch you were not if i didn't even know about any of that it wouldn't have made any difference mm -hmm. because but most people that you date will have past 
exes. I and, also like, think that if you did care, I wouldn't have chosen to date you in the first place. I mean, you would have expressed it to me if really? you really did care. Yeah, of course, like if you what? really felt worried about, oh, can you take those videos down or something oh. like that. So I think that picking, for me, picking somebody that is okay and understands this is what I do for a living. This is not just like, yeah. I'm doing it for fun, it's my job. Right? TLDR, is that what they say? Yeah. Between us or in just our relationship, it doesn't feel anything out of the ordinary of just having an ex. Yeah. But I think with your fan base and like comments and yeah, like the does. internet, it makes a bigger deal. But yeah. I'm just like, okay, whatever. Like, If there's any comments that do make me feel some type of way, I don't think that these people said those things with intent of hurting my feelings. The internet, like people just say things. Mm -hmm. so, what are you gonna do? Just close your eyes. China. Who has a better style between you two? Swag? Style. Style? I think no. I have better style. I think I have better more, taste. I think I have more swag. What oh, is oh, one thing about the I other that you're grateful for? I like, I'm very grateful for the fact that she likes to cook. A lot of delicious meals. She's a very nurturing vibe. Okay, one thing that I really admire about you is your ability to just take accountability. I know it sounds very simplistic. It's more when you know you're wrong and you're just like, okay, yeah, I fucked up. You just admit it, which mm -hmm. I think I have a problem doing because mm -hmm. I don't like to be wrong, but you're very good at it and you don't take yourself too seriously. It's very refreshing and I need that type of energy in my life. Swag. Do you plan to get married? We Actually, do plan on getting married. Probably like two to oh, three yeah. or two to four years. Wait, two to four or two to four? What's the sacrifice you've made for each other? So one big sacrifice I've made is the Phoenix Suns and the LA Clippers are playing right now. Oh my god! And I'm not watching the NBA playoffs, but instead doing an amazingly cute Q and A with my girlfriend. What? That was okay, okay. Uh, it's not about the relationship. Oh, okay, okay. Set. Um, you always make sacrifices in a relationship. I think you want to do, but then you know you prioritize the relationship above it. Like sometimes I want to go ball. I'm like, hey, you know, maybe I shouldn't ball and hang out with her. What? Yeah. I want to say something, but I I don't know if it, this is hurtful to say. Uh, no, no. Okay, it's not like a single sacrifice, but one thing I was very reluctant about when I was getting into this relationship is because I ended my previous relationship like not that long before I met Mike. So I felt I should have at least taken some time to be single, not to like fuck around. I don't know, like I, I was in a very long relationship. So I've never really taken the time to just like be on my own. I always thought like, hey, maybe that's something that I should have prioritized. I just felt you were so special. And I feel like me choosing to be by myself is not something that I can't do while in a relationship, but then I might not meet somebody that makes me feel Feel this way. I feel uh, this way. I'm getting uh -huh. hard. What's something you used to believe about relationships but no longer do? Mm, I think do I you used have to. Anything? Yeah, I think I used to believe like, oh my god, there's somebody out there that's perfect for you. I think I believe more so there's like a set of people that are compatible with you and then uh, the rest is just like putting in work to make it something that oh. is sustainable. I don't think you just buy it. That's such a romantic way of looking at things in the beginning. Because like, I think one thing that I thought, I used to watch a lot of rom-coms and I was very impressionable. They paint relationships in this way that feels so not realistic. I, remember, I literally just sound like a cornball. Oh, I thought you were going to cry. Yeah, people always tell you like, oh, what you see in movies is just not... I mean, some of the situations are very unrealistic, mm -hmm. but there's just like certain times where I felt my life was very movie-like. I realized that relationships can feel the way that I saw them portrayed with the right person. Okay, Mike <laughs> wants to go because uh, <laughs> he wants to watch his game. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching, guys! Bye -bye. That's it! Oh, and you go a sneak one. You slick, eh? Okay. Hey, w Riz. Bye bye. Bye. -bye.